water continues to be at the distance of the readers, hearers, and doers of this most holy word.
College Fund was born out of the vision of Dr. Frederick D. Patterson and 27 other college presidents for the mutual benefit of educating young, gifted, and deserving African American youth. The long term goal was to provide a low cost, quality education in an environment that enables students to excel. We
support this group of dynamic and dedicated professionals who deliver essential services to its members, institutions, faculty, students, and staff. We are proud to support the leadership and staff of the University of Seattle. In supporting the University of Seattle, we will provide better features for the young men and women in the service and help change the world one degree at a time. We believe that a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Please remain standing to sing. Lift every voice and sing. The words are on the back of your program.
comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10, and it reads as follows. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruit of all thy increase. So shall thy bonds be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Uh, we are several ways to give. If you uh, got your money at home and don't want it to come back and bring it, uh, mail it in to uh, 2120 Renard Street, Beaumont, Texas, 77703. And you can do like you're doing this morning. And for you new people that's very familiarized with our electronics now, and you can do it through PayPal, give the file, and cash out. Uh, could you please uh, obey the urgent as they instruct us on how to give to the Lord? Thank you. Thank you. 
provide assistance to help students advance their career, educational opportunities, and help African Americans obtain graduate and undergraduate degrees and to close a persistent gap with other groups in college. Throughout the year, UNCO works with churches and faith groups across the country to implement a UNCO Sunday, a day of financial support to HBCUs from congregation community on a specific Sunday in February.
both have a challenge in them. Daniel 6 is 50 years after Daniel 3. But the challenges are very similar. In Daniel 3, the Hebrew men were challenged to turn from the worship of their God to the worship of our God. In, in chapter 6, Daniel is confronted with the challenge of obeying man's law instead of God's law. From the dealing with um, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, those challenges are what we deal with every day of our lives. Christians are always challenged yes, to turn to some idol of God. Mm -hmm. We're always challenged to obey man's law and <coughs> man's rule rather than God's oh, law yeah. and yeah. God's rule. I think COVID and social media have, have helped us to understand just how many idol worshipers we do have. Yeah. Um, before COVID, there uh, folks that were going to church, but, but after COVID, some of them don't go anymore. But, so we all had to go to social media. And some folks that used to go to church now stay home in the, in the bed and I close on yeah. a cup of coffee and they they do church on social media because their bed feels just so yeah. good they just can't get up. Yeah. Which yeah. means that yeah. their bed has become their God yeah. on Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. So so we're all always challenged yeah. To, yeah. to to worship these these out of God. Uh, Daniel, Daniel has lived through King Nebuchadnezzar, and he he has lived through the uh, the Babylonian period. And the Babylonians have been defeated by the Persians, and there is a new king on the throne by the name of Darius. This this new king has has noticed Daniel's relationship to his God. This new king respects Daniel for his relationship to his God. This, this new king really <coughs> loves, honor, and appreciate Daniel. There is no indication that this new king is a believer, but he does love, honor, and appreciate Daniel. This new king, Darius, has appointed 120 princes over his business in his kingdom. And then he has appointed three presidents over the 120 princes. And then he appointed one president over all of them. And that one that he appointed was Daniel. Now that created some problems. Yes. Because Daniel was not a homeboy. Daniel was a foreigner in a strange land. Daniel was not from Babylon the Persian. Daniel was from Judah. Yeah. And, there, and they, the people in the kingdom that, that were under Daniel uh, got angry at Daniel. Yeah. And there are two schools of thought about why they, they became so upset. One school of thought is that they became jealous of Daniel because he was a father. They didn't feel like he should be in that high position. And since we're in the middle of Black History Month, let me share with us black folks that there are still some folks that feel like you ought not be in certain positions. Because this is not, to say, our native land. And since we're not from here, we ought not be in certain positions in this world, in our community, in our state, in our nation, it has nothing to do with your ability, yeah. it has something to do with the color of your skin. Yeah. They were not angry yeah. with Daniel because of his ability. They were angry with Daniel because he was not one of them. And yeah. that's why folks get angry at us for being 
in certain positions is because they say we are not one of them. We don't belong here. And, and so Daniel, the second, the second uh, school of thought about whether they were, uh, I mean, for why they were angry at Daniel, is that there were some in the kingdom that, that wanted to do some crooked business. Yeah. There were some among these princes that wanted to defraud the king. Mm -hmm. Some that wanted to steal from the king. Yeah. There were some that wanted to do some underhanded business. But Daniel was in charge. Daniel was a righteous man. Daniel was a man of wisdom. Yeah. Daniel was a man of prudence. Daniel was a man of conscientiousness. Daniel would not allow them to do any crooked business uh, with the king's money. Daniel stood in their way. So we, we, we can't do it as long as he is here. Yeah. So then naturally, they got angry with that. We, we, we want to do something and, and he won't let us do it. And Christians, oftentimes you are standing in the way. Somebody around somewhere in your home, on your job, in your community, in your family that want to do some crooked stuff. But they know it will not be permitted because you are there. And to them, you are standing in the way. Well, they decided he's got to go. He, he doesn't belong here, and he's standing in our way. So they said the only way, we know how the king feels about him, and the only way we'll get him out of that position, we've got to find something on him that we can use to convince the king to move him. Yeah. Now, when you're standing in folks' way, you want to understand they're trying to get something on you so they can get you out of the way. They said, but, but, but what, what can we do? What can, where can we look? First thing they said, well, let's, let's look at the business in the kingdom. It just Yes, it just might be that he is keeping us yes. from doing some underhanded stuff, and he might be doing it himself. <laughs> it just might be that he's keeping us from stuffing our pockets with the king's money, and he's stuffing his own pockets with the king's money. Yes. Yes. Keep in mind that whatever you prevent others from doing, you want to be very sure they're going to be checking you out to see if you are doing the same thing that you're preventing them from doing. There was a man that was hard. He, he, he taught against the evils and the sin of gambling. And, and naturally, he made some folks angry, some church folks angry about talking against gambling. And, and so they, they decided to check him out yeah. to see, see if maybe he's not doing what he's telling us not to do. And they noticed he would go out in the country quite often. And so they decided to follow him out to the country one night. And they walked up on him at the dice game with the dice in his hand. <laughs> and, and, and he looked up at him and said, you, you caught the old coon at last. <laughs> you out yeah. if you are standing in their way. Yeah. Senior men and senior women, be very sure mm. what we are teaching the young people against oh, that we are not guilty of it because some of them just might get angry yeah. and God just might let them catch the yeah. old fool yeah. in the act. Yeah. Yeah. So then, so they said, we're going we're gonna to see if, if maybe Stuff in his pocket. So they checked him out. And 
when they checked him out, they couldn't find a thing wrong with Daniel's management style. Everything was on the up and up. He was doing everything right. He was managing the king's business well. And so they said, we still got to get him out of our way. He doesn't belong in that position and he's standing in our way. Christians, there's always somebody that wants you out of the way. So the next thing they did was they did a plot against them. That's verses 5 through 9. They did a plot against them. They made a, a decree yeah, yeah. that said if any man is found praying to God or me, yeah. he should be cast into the den of life. Now notice that decree didn't say if any man is found praying to God. They knew that wasn't going to fly with the king. King knew Daniel was praying to God, but the king was also benefited from the fact that Daniel was praying to God because Daniel was a righteous man. So they said, God and man, other than you, the king. So what they were saying is, King, this decree says, decree says that if anybody is called praying to God or man other than you. They should be thrown in the den of life. In other words, they were making the king a priest. And they said, King, we want to put you in a priestly robe. We, we want the people in this kingdom to pray to you and you would pray to God for them. Yeah, yeah. If they pray to God without praying to you, they should go to the lion's den. Yeah. Well, well, the king didn't know what was going on. You want to be careful what you agree to sometimes. Yeah. Be sure to check it out and spend a lot of time in prayer. Yes, the Lord. king was new. And he apparently saw this as an opportunity for the people in the kingdom to be faithful to him. Yes. So they, I, I'm going to check out their faithfulness. I'm going to sign this decree because I want to see if the people in my kingdom will indeed come to me and let me go to God for them. So the king signed the decree. And they said, King, we only want it in place for 30 days. So King signed a decree that, that if anybody is praying to any God or man other than you, they will be cast into the den of life. The enemy has to work hard to get a Christian. Yeah. The enemy check you out and if they can't find something they will make something. Yeah, Christians yeah. keep that in mind because you're always in somebody's way. You may not know it, but, but as a Christian, you're in somebody's way and they are after you. Yeah, yeah. They were after Jesus all along. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, have their, they have their plan. Mm -hmm. Next thing we know is Daniel's faithfulness and obedience. Now, Daniel knew the plan. Daniel knew the king had signed the decree. So what would Daniel do? Daniel knew that he, if he was caught opening his window to Jerusalem and praying three times a day, he was going to be put in that den of light. Yes. So yes. what did Daniel do? Well, Daniel could have said, I, I don't want to start any trouble here. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm not going to be opening 
my window to heaven and to Jerusalem and pray. Pray it three times a day. Daniel could have said, well, if everybody else in the kingdom is praying to the king, then I don't want to be different from the others. Young, young people, keep in mind, there comes a time when you need to be different from others. But Daniel said, well, Daniel, well, maybe I just shouldn't be different from others. Daniel could have said, you know, the king loves me. The king honors me. The king respects me. The king has given me a high position in his cabinet. Maybe I should not disrespect the king. But Daniel didn't do any of that. Daniel said, yes, I'm going to keep on doing what I've been doing. Daniel could have even said, when I go home, I'm not going to open my windows anymore. I'm going to pray in secret. And when I pray to my God in secret, they will not know I'm praying to him. But Daniel said, that's not what I've been doing. I, I, I've not been praying in secret. I, I've been opening my windows toward my homeland, Jerusalem, and I've been praying to my God three times a day. I'm going to remain faithful and obedient because the law of God says for us to pray to him, for us to call on him and not call on man. I'm going to be faithful to the laws of my God like I've always been. But Daniel, don't you know you're going to the den, but my faith is in my God. Whenever you remain faithful, there's a cost. The cost of faithfulness. You did what you've been doing. But he ended up in the den of life. When you are faithful and obedient to the laws of God, you will have to pay a cost. I read a story, I read a story about, about a little boy that, that gave his life to Christ and he was going to church and he was part of the youth group. And the youth group had a had a, a, a prayer session, and, and his parents told him, said, "Son, don't don't you get involved in, in all that prayer stuff and bring it back to this house because we don't believe in all of that foolishness." There was a young man who did faithful to his God, but he could not go to his own house comfortably. There was a lady who became a Christian and. And her husband said, it's all right for you to be a Christian, but don't bring that Christian stuff to this house. Leave that Christian stuff out there somewhere. The woman couldn't go to her own house and be herself. There is a cause yes, where we are faithful to God yes, and faithful to God's love. Yes, Christ and your faith was that of being cast into the den of Life. Well, let's look at Daniel's deliverance. The king, the king had a bad night that night when Daniel was cast into the den of lions. The king, the text says, the king did sleep that night. The king was restless that night. Although he was in his comfortable house, his comfortable palace, he had a bad night. He was angry because he, he realized that when they, when they told him that they had caught Daniel praying, he realized then that that did 
creed he signed was not about him. It was about trapping Daniel. Yeah. And he had great respect for Daniel. Yeah. So he got angry at them. Yeah. But he could not change the law. Yeah. So against his will, against his better judgment, he had to cast Daniel into the den of now, he had hope that Daniel's God would, would deliver him, but he was not hopeful that he would do it. So the next morning, after the king had a bad night, he, he went out to the door of the den of lions, and, and he called out to Daniel. He said, Daniel, did the God that you serve, yeah. Deliver you. Yes, Daniel, did the God that you are so faithful to yeah, yeah. deliver you? Yeah. Daniel, I, I notice you, you have been consistent yeah. in your worship. Yeah. You have been consistent in your prayer life. Yeah. You knew the decree was signed, but, but you kept on opening your window to heaven, opening your window to Jerusalem and, and praying to God. Yes. Daniel, did, did that God mm -hmm. that you were so faithful to, whose yeah. laws you yeah. kept, did he deliver you? Yeah. And the king knew that whatever you were put in the dead of lines, if you, if you live right. through the night, yeah. you could be set free the next day. Yeah. So the king's question was, Daniel, did you go? Yeah. And Daniel, <laughs> Daniel answered, Okay, <laughs> live forever. <laughs> My God, yes, sir. Yes, sir. set the age. Yes, Lord. Yes, now, now, let me explain this to you. He said, My God, set the age. Yes. But, but, but what he was really saying was, King, when, when they threw me in, Yeah. Uh, I want them, mm -hmm. their 
Then you prosper. Then you prosper. What does this mean? It could mean, as some theologians say, that Daniel got another promotion. Some suggest that Daniel was given an even higher position. Some suggest that it means that the people that tried to trap him, tried to get him killed, saw what his God has done, and they respected him more. Yeah. The people in the kingdom. Now, now, a few of them that started that, they were gone. Yeah. But some of them that lined up with those that started that were still there. Yeah. And they got a chance to see what Daniel's God did. Yeah. So the next time someone would ask them to rise up against Daniel, they would say, oh no. <laughs> Not him. Yes, 